right, this is going to be an exam review video. As you can see, I've got here open uh, my exam one review document. And I'm just going to work some problems that you will probably see on your exam. And let's start here with number four. Um, it is this function r of x equals to, let me write it, let me write it down. So it's equal to uh, x times x squared minus 9 over, and how fortunate I am that the denominator is already factored. And it asked us to find all of the holes and vertical asymptotes for this function. All right. Let us go ahead and factor that numerator. All right, the function is completely factored. <clears throat> and uh, if I were to cancel these out, I would actually lose this equality. The, the, the canceled version is not the same function as the original one. They are different. They are different because uh, here in, in, in this function, r of x, uh, there is a hole at the x value of 3. So the holes occur where there, the terms can cancel, okay? Um, and what I want to do now, I guess, is make one of these. So, so what I want to do now is list out my partition numbers. My partition numbers would be uh, each of these uh, would be the roots of each of these terms. So 0, 3, minus 3, minus 1, and minus 5. If I make my number line now, like I'm going to do a sign chart. You better get comfortable with this sign chart because it's going to happen over and over again uh, for for quite a while in this course. I list out all of my partition numbers on the number line in order, and and then now I want to denote up above each partition number what its role was right so I'll put a u for that was where it made the function undefined and I'll put a zero for that's where it uh, made the function be zero I guess I could even go one step further and just say that I had a hole right here at 3. All right. Super. They wanted us to find the vertical asymptotes. You know that R of X has a vertical asymptote. We have a vertical asymptote if and only if if and only if the limit towards whatever number 
let's say here, minus 5, from either side, you come from either side towards minus 5 of the function r of x. Don't come from both sides, just come from one, one side. Let's say we're going to come from the left here. Then the limit as x goes to minus 5 from the left needs to be what? It needs to be one of the infinities. Then you'll know that it has a vertical asymptote there. All right. Uh, well, let's see. If I... Uh, get some use some test points like I think maybe that one of the easiest test points for me here might be uh, the test point of one I don't ever put my test points on the line because it makes it confusing I just say to myself one is the first test point I'm going to use and then I come through here and put a one in everywhere and I do not calculate my number I only calculate the sign Put a 1 in everywhere, and then calculate the sign. So when I put a 1 into the numerator everywhere for x, it's going to be a positive number times a negative number times a positive number. When I put a 1 in everywhere for x in the bottom, it's going to be a positive times a negative times a positive. So this will wind up being a negative over a negative, which will end up being positive. So right here in this interval, it is positive. Okay. Uh, everywhere else away from the repeated roots, this thing will just alternate back and forth. And because there is a hole at three, um, you can just sort of, it won't alternate there. Right? I mean, you can check if you want. If I put 4 in for everywhere, it would be a positive times a positive times a positive over a positive times a positive times a positive. That's going to be a positive number. So, um, great. I've got my sign chart filled out. And uh, the limit as x goes to negative 5 from the left, well, that was where it was undefined because why because the uh, putting a negative 5 in the bottom results in a 0 down there so that means that as X approaches minus 5 it's going to be one of the infinities and in fact if we approach from the left it would be positive infinity so we know we have a vertical asymptote at X equals minus 5 Likewise, you could show that you had a vertical asymptote at x equals minus 1 in the very same way. Make sure you understand the distinction between someone saying, tell me what the vertical asymptotes are, and someone saying, prove to me that the vertical asymptotes are such and such. Okay. And the real reason I wanted to do this that problem was so that we could do the, the partition numbers and fill out one of these sign charts. Let's look at another problem. Uh, the test has 15 questions on it, and you have two hours to do it. All right. So understanding how to fill out that um, sign chart is probably going to be pretty T darn important. Okay, let's do number two. Let's do number two. Evaluate this limit. Okay, it's a limit as x goes to minus one, and it's this ratio of two polynomials. So I have uh, x squared plus 3x minus 4 over x squared minus 16. Uh, if I can just put in my number and get back a number, then I'll know that this function was defined there 
and that the number that I get is, is the answer. So let me naively try a, a minus one squared plus three times minus one minus four. Well, this part here is a polynomial. Polynomials are continuous, so the limit the limit of that polynomial is exactly what you would get when you put in the number. And I think we're going to be okay here because uh, uh, the, the, the polynomial in the denominator does not come out zero. So I think that we're going to get a number. Right? In the numerator, I get uh, 1 minus 3 minus 4. And in the denominator, I get... 1 minus 16. So we have uh, 1 minus 7, that's minus 6, over 1 minus 16, that's minus 15. And then I would uh, cancel a 3 from the top and the bottom, cancel the negatives, you get 2 fifths. Okay, I wonder if we have any um, any examples on here. Okay, here's one. Use the graph below to answer the questions that follow. Uh, let's just do... Um, the, let's just do uh, H. I want to do part H. Part H is the two-sided limit as X goes to 4. X is 4 is right there. Now let me make a little sketch of this scenario on my screen for just the relative uh, relevant uh, portion of that graph. We're looking at something like this and we can pretend that this y value of that hole is 5. Alright, and I want to know about the limit as x goes to 4 of this here function. This is the function f of x. In order for that limit to exist, the limit from the left must equal the limit from the right. And since there's no jump, discontinuity, that limit will exist. The limit from the left is the same thing as the limit from the right uh, as we get closer and closer with uh, an x value of 4, we get closer and closer to a y value of 5. Yet another way to look at it that's even more correct is to say, um, is to say, no matter how close you want to get to 5, you can be as close as you want to 5. Make a little window around 5 and then um, we can project that window out to uh, the curve here and uh, if we do that then I am assured that no matter how close you choose uh, your interval around 5, no matter how tight your little window around 5 is, I will always have a little window here around 4, the number that we are approaching. Okay. Uh, 
So this limit here must be equal to 5. The issue that we have is that f of 4 is not 5. Now all that means is that it's that f is not continuous at 5. It's not continuous at x equals, excuse me, not at 5, at x equals 4. It's not continuous there. But that's okay, they didn't ask us about that. Uh, looking at the same picture, let's do um, um, B. Let's do question B. For question B, we are finding a limit as x goes to 3 from the left. Okay, and it's pretty much just looking like a, a line right there with a hole at the end of it, right over the top of where 3 is at. Here's my drawing. And here's the name of this function, f of x. And the y coordinate of that hole was just 2. And I guess I can sketch what the other side of the function was doing. You know, this is what we were just looking at. Uh, so there is our function and the limit from the left. Uh, you know, it has got to be 2. It has got to be 2. If I make a little window right to the left side of 3 and project it up to the curve and then over to the y-axis, it traps 2 right there. So that no matter how close you want to get to 2, if I want to look at numbers, you know, super duper close to 2, maybe just a little bit bigger than 2, then I will definitely be able to find some number that is a little bit to the left side of 3 that causes me to to be on the point on right there on the line. You keep getting closer to 2 and my red dot will keep moving uh, on down the line. It'll never fill in the hole because right at 3 we have to jump up here. So the limit from the left as x goes to 3 is 2. The limit from the right as x goes to 3 is not 2. It's 4. Consequently, since 2 is not the same number as 4, then that means the two-sided limit the limit as x goes to 3 does not exist. All right. Let's look at some limits at infinity. Uh, 107, right there. So question 107 is a limit at infinity. So it's the limit as x goes to infinity of the rational function 7 minus 5x squared over 
4x squared plus 9x minus 11. And then just allow me to rewrite this in a way that people are more used to, such that uh, the highest degree term comes first, and all of the lesser degree terms come afterwards. Now, if you have to write down um, what this limit is, if, you, if, if you're just guessing multiple choice, then whatever. But if you need to demonstrate with your writing why this limit is what it is, then there's two things you can, two different ways you could proceed. There's the the super duper official way. And then there's the hand wavy, I think I know what I'm talking about way. So the hand wavy, I think I know what I'm talking about way is to kind of make the argument that, well, in the limit, all of those lower degree terms aren't contributing anything meaningful to the behavior of the function. By the time you get way far out uh, for your x value, this is the one dominating the denominator. These aren't doing squat. Right? If x is a million, then you're going to stick a million in there for x. You're going to get some huge number and then, ooh, add 7. Big deal. Right? So you just ditch the, the rest of those terms, the rest of those lower degree terms, and then now look what you've got. You can cancel the x squareds. So this would be the limit as x goes to infinity of just minus 5 over 4. That's a constant function now. So this is just minus 5 fourths. Now that way is totally acceptable. It will get you all the points that, that you are wanting. Um, but... Let me show you the little bit better way uh, on, a, on a slightly modified example. Uh, so let's take our example here and modify it to just be that. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Then what I want to do is multiply by one in a in a way that I get to pick. And the way that I want to pick is I want to multiply by one. So that means I need to multiply by the same thing on the top and bottom of this fraction. I look around at all of my x terms. <coughs> Um, and I pick the one with the highest degree. In this case, it's a 2. So let's multiply by 1 over x squared over 1 over x squared. I can then bring that, I can then distribute it into the numerator and the denominator. In the numerator, I would get minus 5 over x plus 7 over x squared. And in the denominator, I would get 4 plus uh, 9 over x minus 11 over x squared. Now the limit of the quotient is the quotient of the limits, and the limit of the sum is the sum of the limits. So you can take, you can take limits of each little piece, one at a time. And if you did that, the limit as x goes to infinity, uh, you know, for this term, x is going to infinity, that means that this whole thing is going to zero. And here, x is going to infinity, x is in the denominator, so x is going to zero. And x goes to zero here, and x goes to zero here, and this thing looks like zero over four, which is just zero. <coughs>
your hand wavy argument would have looked like let me throw away all of the the terms that aren't the first term but then when you go to cancel those X's uh, you can only cancel one of them and then now you can see that there's going to be an X term in the bottom and and then we're right back here okay let's do another one <clears throat> Um, we need to find some vertical asymptotes. So uh, I'll just make one up for us to find some vertical asymptotes. So find uh, the vertical asymptotes of the function uh, x minus 1 times x plus 1 over uh, x squared minus 4 and x plus 4. Right on. In fact, I don't just want to find the vertical asymptotes. I want you to find the partition numbers, make the sign chart, and find the vertical asymptotes. Uh, even that's not everything I wanted to say. I, let me write it like this. <clears throat> you need to, you need to number one, do the partition numbers. Two, sign chart. Three, um, uh, you, uh, uh, I want to say like for for each undefined point on your sign chart, find the limit as x goes to that undefined point. And then finally, number four, state all the vertical asymptotes. Doing all of these four steps will get you well prepared for not only the test but for the future of this course. So what are our partition numbers? <coughs> well to figure that out we need to completely factor everything. Everything is almost factored except for the stuff in the bottom. Now it's completely factored. Now I can say that my partition numbers are um, uh, minus 1 and 1, and 2 and minus 2 and 4. Now I can make my sign chart. Okay, You don't see any repeated roots here. And since there's no repeated roots, I know that in between each interval, uh, the sign will just alternate. So here's minus 2, here's minus 1, and then 1, and 2, and 4. And the most convenient test point for me is going to be 0. But first, let me list out uh, that this is where the function is zero and this is where the function is zero and at all the rest of them is where it's undefined. So then using my test point of zero right here 
I can determine what the sine of this function would be because it's going to be a negative times a positive over a negative times a positive times a negative. And the end result is that I'm going to have a negative result. The answer will be negative if I put in zero. So it's negative right there. And then it just alternates back and forth. It will alternate back and forth whenever there aren't any repeated roots. Great, so now I've got my sign chart. For each one of these undefined points, I can now say what the limits are. The limit as x goes to minus 2 from the left of this function has got to be minus infinity. See how it's negative right there? And it's going to be undefined because it's going to have a zero in the denominator, but going to have a number in the numerator. So it's going to blow off to minus infinity. If I took the limit as x goes to minus 2 from the right, I would be getting positive infinity. And uh, here I'll write one more. If I did the limit as x goes to 4 from the right of this function, I would be getting positive infinity. Positive infinity. In fact, this is almost a rudimentary sketch of what your function will end up looking like. If you can fill out this sign chart, then you know uh, what the behavior of your function will look like. That's what your function is going to end up looking like. Based on nothing more than, than making the sign chart, knowing where the vertical asymptotes are, and knowing if the function was positive or negative in those intervals. Uh, clearly then, our vertical asymptotes are at minus 2, 2, and 4. That's where the function was undefined, but had that's where the function had a 0 in the denominator, and some number in the numerator, indicating to us that if you took a limit towards that point, uh, it would blow off to infinity. Okay, let's do one more and then take a little break. Um, to do here I want to do a limit where you need to do some cancellation all right let's do 203 203 is a limit as x goes to 3 of x squared minus 5x plus 6 over x minus 3 all right, if I naively proceed and try and put in my 3 everywhere, I'm going to get a 0 divided by 0 error. It's an indeterminate form. That's your clue to factor. Uh, so, uh, we would factor that numerator to be x minus 3 times x minus 2 over x minus 3. And you say, aha, there's a hole at x minus 3 on this function. Now here I really can do the cancellation because I'm not, I'm not saying the functions are equal. I'm saying their limits are equal. So the limit as x goes to 3 of just 
the polynomial linear function x minus 2, yeah, it really is equal to all this stuff. And now that I have a polynomial, which is continuous, I can evaluate that function by putting in the number. The answer is 1. Curiously, uh, this, this original function that we started with, right? this function right here, let me graph it for you real quick. For me to graph that function, I only need to look at this guy. Their graphs look nearly identical. This line that I have drawn is the function x minus 2. It is not this function up here. But I can modify this guy to produce for you the original function. I just need to account for the whole that was at 1. Now this thing I have sketched is this function. You can see the whole at 1. You can see the whole when x is 3. You can see that the limit of x going to 3 is 1. That's it. All right. I will pick back up in another part two video.